You're listening to Jordanville Readings, a podcast of Holy Trinity Publications, located at Holy Trinity Monastery in Jordanville, New York. Today's reading is from Ordinary Wonders, Stories of Unexpected Grace, by Alessia Nikolaeva. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. The Angel That winter, my life was very difficult. First of all, I was very tired. It was almost ten years since my husband had become a priest, and we had moved to Peredzilkina. I had worked as his driver practically from morning till night and would drive him before the crack of dawn to Moscow, and back an hour when all the normal people had already dined, soaked in the bathtub, and were now sitting and peacefully watching television. Second of all, for some reason, I was chronically frozen. It was so cold outside that the rooms of our decrepit Peredelkina house didn't heat to higher than 53 degrees, and the pipes constantly froze. For this reason, we always had to be on the watch, place plastic water bottles full of hot water around the pipes, keep the heated oven open, keep a thin stream of water running, watch the switched-on lights and make sure that they were only on it one at a time, not all at once. In the worst case, what would happen is the electrical fuses wouldn't be able to handle it and our house would be cast into total darkness. And as we know, there is already more than enough darkness in December. Then there was the Christmas fast on top of everything. In short, I was completely worn out and awaited Christmas with impatience. After that, there would be more daylight. Then there would be Christmas tide. Then it wouldn't be long before Cheese Fair Week and then Pascha would come with the sun, warm breezes and birds. So, lamenting and struggling, I suddenly understood what it was that I wanted, and what would be a true comfort to me. To see my guardian angel. After all, I mused, he had been given to me at my baptism and has been with me all this time. He stays near near me in my room, is secretly present in my car, but I don't feel him or see him or hear him. This wish of mine became quite a temptation. Even people who have the least understanding of spiritual life know that if a sinner begins to see bodiless spirits— It only speaks of his complete darkened state. And if my wish were suddenly granted and I saw my angel, it would mean one thing. Goodness gracious, it was time for me to seek treatment. But still, I wanted it so much, so much, as if he was my very favorite being, as if I was languishing in estrangement from him and awaited an impending reunion with him. It was terrible. I couldn't pray to the Lord to reveal him to me. Neither could I free myself from this insane wish. In short, it became an obsession. Soon Christmas Eve would come. I thought, I'll go to communion on Christmas Eve morning during the liturgy of St. Basil the Great, and then I will ask the priest's blessing to commune on Christmas Day as well. I felt depressed and was falling apart. So that's what I did. I went to communion on Christmas Eve and also received permission for Holy Communion on Christmas Day. I immediately felt better. Music began to play in my soul. My internal candle was relit. I felt its warmth. It was just too bad that on Christmas my husband was scheduled to serve not in his own church of the Holy Mother Tatiana with my children and grandchildren attended on great holidays, but in the Church of Christ the Savior. The little children definitely would not last through the night service there. There was nowhere for them to sit or curl up. Fine. Let my husband serve with the patriarch. I would go where my children would be both young and old. Then, after the service, I would pick my husband up and take him home to Peredzilnik. Then, after the service, I would pick my husband up and take him home to Peredzilkina. I drove him to the Church of Christ the Savior and returned to Peredzilkina to take my daughter and granddaughter to the Church of the Holy Mother Tatiana. I turned onto the highway, drove along the deserted road, the trees were all covered in frost, the drifting snow blew along the ground, I was in no rush and looked around in admiration. And here was the place where I had to slow down, turn my left-hand turn signal, and press on the brakes, because I had to turn left and enter through the gates. As soon as I made the 90-degree turn, I suddenly saw a solid black car that had just crossed the side line and was aiming straight for me at a frightening speed. It was making directly for my driver's side door, and in those precious seconds I understood that this was the end. This was it. But on the other hand, I had such peace in my soul, and I heard a voice, also very calm and articulate, distinctly say to me, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Then at the very last moment, the driver of the car flying straight at me swerved to the left, hit me slightly in the left side panel, after which he flew along the towering snowdrifts another five meters until he crashed into a metal fence. The fence sprang back and stopped the suicidal flight of the car, which still managed to make a hole in it. A man of northern ethnicity jumped out of this BMW and rushed to the back door. He threw it open and lifted out a child of about seven years old in his arms. He held him and held him up high. Then the boy began to stir and stood on his feet. We were all whole and unharmed. But I continued to sit in my car, which after the impact had turned to the right and had buried itself nose first into a pile of frozen snow. A true miracle had just taken place, and my soul was celebrating while still unable to admit and recognize this. I was especially taken aback by the voice I had clearly heard, Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. I felt that the speaker must have been near me at that very moment, right there with me. Well, after that there was a lot of hustle and bustle. I had to take my daughter and granddaughter to church in a taxi, wait for the police, ask someone to pick up my husband after the midnight surface in Pierdelkina, and so on and so forth. But that's besides the point. I understood that the Lord had heard my secret complaints and had comforted me with the assurance that my angel, even if he remained unseen by me, was ever by my side. I walked and he followed. I slept and he stayed over me. I wrote and he looked over my shoulder. I languished in loneliness, but I was with him. But also I became angry, and he heard my rebukes, my unfair and venomous words. And that meant that everything that happened to me was not in vain. Someone took it seriously, and it was all counted and recorded in a book that would be read at the final judgment. And so it would seem that my problem was resolved in full. My requests were granted. Rejoice, sing, live. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. But in fact, it was not so. Because in a considerably short time, it was already great Lent, in March, the month of oxymorons, when seemingly disparate beginnings and ends meet, when scenes of childhood, youth, and our continuing years of maturity mysteriously come together in time, when the frailty and transience of life are especially distinctly felt, and with them its boundlessness and transcendence, when both the inescapable approach of the fateful day and its ephemeral nature are keenly felt, the image of this unseen angel once again appeared as a desired and longed-for object. I walked among the black, shriveled, wicked snowbanks and tried to imagine where he was, but was still unable to find him. I searched for him as for my beloved, and I couldn't find him. I called him, but heard no response. It was all happening again. A dark and foul flood of evil thoughts rises up within me, separating my mind from God. Do thou dry it up, O my intercessor, my angel, my angel. But soon Pasco arrived at last. Everything became exactly how I had dreamed it would be in the beginning of winter. The sun shone out, the birds began to sing, the jasmine bush on my porch began to perk up. Several days later, my husband's parishioner came to visit him at the church of the Holy Mother Tatiana, having just returned from the Holy Land, and brought him a paschal gift. It was a photograph of Isidore, Patriarch of Jerusalem, taken on Pascha, when he himself communed believers in his church. In the photo, he stood in the ambo with the chalice in his hands, carefully administering the gifts with the communion spoon. Next to him, on the same side at the chalice, just slightly askew, was the silhouette of a snow-white angel with a burning candle in his hand. We pray that you were edified by today's podcast. If you would like to help in the creation of more Jordanville Readings podcasts, consider supporting us on Patreon. As a thank you to our subscribers, we also offer special discounts on our online store, Visit patreon.com slash holytrinity to set up a monthly donation. May the Lord reward you for your generosity. Jordanville Readings is produced and distributed by Holy Trinity Publications in Jordanville, New York. All rights reserved. For more information about today's reading and our full list of publications, please see the show notes or visit holytrinitypublications.com. Thank you.